So the beginning of this episode was so hype. You got God Jill beating the living shit out of Rogue. They're going both shadow forms. And the animation and art looked really nice in the beginning of this episode. The beginning of this episode was just hype as fuck. But as the episode progressed, it was just downhill from there. It was like great startup, just everything. And the art and animation for the most part throughout the episode, specifically the art, looked great once again. They had that sunset feel that I was talking about in last week's episode review. It looked like the sunset and everybody looked really nice. So the art throughout the entire episode looked good. Animation was alright for the most part, but the art looked really nice. But first of all, the return of the Krusty Cutioners. Like... It wasn't bad enough that we already had to experience them, but they returned, and they did come back in the manga, but there was filler, because when they came back in the manga, for the most part, I believe not much happened with them before something ultimately happened, and I don't want to spoil anything, but they added in filler bits, like if they came back charging, fighting, and there was a little bit of a clash between them, in the manga, it wasn't like that, and I was just like, are you fucking kidding me? These characters suck. They take the word executioners, and I honestly would prefer, for any Bleach fans, out there, I would prefer the executioners and bleach the pool bringers over these crusties. Give me that Tsukishima any day over all of these crusties because they just suck. And I was like, oh, why are they here? And they're extending this little confrontation. It shouldn't have been like that. I mean, the only thing worse than them is that fucking dude inside of the dolphin's blowhole. Like, that was the only thing that I can say is worse than, you know, a couple episodes ago. But aside from that, they were just like, oh, why are they here? They're taking up time. And I applaud the anime again. For trying to make up for a hero's blunder regarding, you know, hyping these people up that they're the executioners, no one lives, and they're making them return as though, like, you know, they haven't been defeated or anything, but they just suck, so they just, who cares if they're dead or alive, let's just forget that they ever happened. Now, I like that they were drumming up a little bit more suspense as well with Arcadio saying that he believes the princess Husui is the liar because he, you know, seen that Lucy looked genuine, so definitely I liked that aspect of the episode where they're kind of building up the suspense a little bit more and he's in his armor. I still say that when Hiro started this arc, I think initially Arcadius was supposed to be a bad guy because if I look back, I look back on the anime and I look back in the manga, I'll never forget him laughing maniacally and saying Zero Sama. And then kind of I think Hiro along the way decided, you know what? No, he's not going to be evil. I mean, everything about him started off seeing very shady and suspicious, but I guess at this particular point, for now, anyway, it seems as though he's a decent guy. Because we're seeing his inner thoughts. And he's talking as if, oh man, so who's the liar? So it can't be him unless he's possessed or something. But if you look at Sabretooth, and I'm specifically talking about all of them. The only one out of all of Sabretooth that we've seen that I can applaud and say, yo, that person is awesome. Is Minerva. Everyone else, you go down the list. Rufus, owned by Grey. Sting and Rogue, solo by Natsu. Rogue tries to redeem himself, gets fucking obliterated by God Geo. And that's that he had fucking initially get his ass kicked before the power up. They both got power ups and God Geo still fucked him up. Orga one shotted. Orga got fucking one shotted. And I would have liked, you know, if they're gonna fulfill it with the fucking executioners, at least have him fight a little bit against Loxus before Jura came in and fucking pounded his ass into the ground, which that's what he deserves because at the end of the day, Sabretooth, no lie, you cannot deny it. At the end of the day, what they are, aside from Minerva, my bad bitch Minerva, they're frauds. They're pure frauds. Genma was fucking one shotted by one of his own students. Sting, yeah, he got him off guard, but he was one-shotted. I don't think you can get Makarab off guard, but he was fucking one-shotted by one of his students. And ultimately, if that was the case, then that means Natsu could have beat the tar out of Gemma. And that's just really disappointing, because especially with Orga getting one-shotted at the end, I was just like, are you fucking kidding me? The only thing that was slightly more enjoyable after that, because that would have been the end of the episode, it would have been disgusting, but when Loxus and Jura went at it, Jura just pounded Loxus into the ground, and then Loxus got up and he was like, you know, fighting back, so that was one of the enjoyable aspects of the episode. Now, here's something I want to point out real quick. Jalal was one of the saints at one point, if I'm correct. Forgive me if I'm mistaken, but I'm pretty sure he was one of the saints, or considered one of them. Same thing with Jura. Now, the top four are completely different in a completely different class than the rest of them. The top four, you don't fuck with them. But Jura and Jalal, for the most part, who knows who could have won that match when they had that matchup back then. But ultimately, you would say they're somewhat considered on the same caliber. Maybe Jura's slightly stronger. We don't know to what full extent Jalal can, you know, muster up power. But ultimately, you could say that they're somewhat on a not even playing field, but they're around there. 
Natsu beat Jalal back in the day. He beat him. And ultimately, I wouldn't say that Jalal is even that much stronger than somebody like Loxus. So, Jura right now is probably, you know, a little bit stronger than Jalal, let's just say. You say he's uh, above Jalal or something like that, or around Jalal. So, right then and there, that makes for a pretty awesome fight with Loxus. Because Loxus, at the end of the day, I don't say, I wouldn't say he's that much further away from Jalal's power. And if Jura is around Jalal... Him and Loxus, that should make for a great fight. That's all I'm going to say before <laughs> the next week's episode. Aside from that, the Leon and Chelia fight, just comedic with Gray and stuff like that. Didn't really feel it. It just felt like, you know, kind of slapping that in there. That could have had its own moment in and of itself. Like, maybe a, an entire episode dedicated to make it seem a little bit more suspenseful. Like, what might happen or some shit. But it's just kind of like wedged in between all of these events. So... It really didn't have much impact either. And ultimately, this episode, it was just you bringing the executioners back, adding filler bits with them. You got Orga getting one shotted. The beginning bit with Gajil and Rogue was pretty awesome, but in a sense, Rogue got fucking destroyed again and owned and pwned and showed that him and Sting, as of right now, are nothing but fanboys yet again. At the end of the day, like I said before, I'll say it again Sabretooth, frauds, fraudulent. They just. They keep getting exposed. Only Minerva, like Minerva in this episode is still being a bad bitch, has both Erza and Kagura on the ground, and she's doing her thing. So props to Minerva, but the rest of Sabretooth, like after Orga getting one shotted, after being built up, like you're on Sabretooth, you're fucking garbage, bro. And ultimately, I give this episode like a 4 out of 10. There were some good bits, the beginning bits, and some of the suspenseful bits with Arcadios and whatnot, but aside from that, it was just like, disappointing and ultimately it was like come on bro like execution is returning for filler bits but let me know what you think first of all orga being one-shotted what did you feel about that especially him being hyped up i didn't expect for orga to win at all and obviously i've read the manga but i'm specifically referring to when i first experienced this content i never expected orga to win at the end of the day either loxus or jura i would expect to win but just for him to be one-shotted one-shotted like, come on. And what do you think about God Gill versus Rogue? What do you think about that shadow thing? Another little mystery added in there. But as a whole, this episode, again, my ultimate feeling is like, eh, 4 out of 10. It just it kind of felt like disappointing on many different aspects. But that's all I have for this review. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you liked anything I had to say or enjoyed the video, drop me a like. I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed, you can do so as well. That'd be awesome. I'm Fanel World. And as always, people, have an awesome day.